HOA Karen tows me, but I'm not even in the HOA. I thought I was going to get a nice night at the house, but our local Karen, who is in this HOA, my house is outside of it, had to make a scene. I'd heard stories about her. She took her role as the unofficial guardian of sorts of the HOA very seriously, even if it meant causing trouble for those who weren't even part of the HOA like me. As I settled down, preparing to unwind after a long day, I heard a ruckus outside. I got curious, so I peeked through the curtains, only to see ugly HOA Karen pointing at my car. I frowned, wondering what on earth she could be us just so upset about. I was parked legally on the street, and my car, it was well maintained. So I just shook my head and decided to confront the situation head on. Stepping outside, I was met with a tirade of complaints from Karen about how my car was ruining the neighborhood and that it was an eyesore. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. It wasn't the first time someone had complained about aesthetics, but this was a whole new level. Excuse me, I interjected, attempting to inject some reason into the conversation. Hey, I'm not part of this HOA. I'm free to park on the street as long as I'm not breaking any rules, which I'm not. Karen, however, was having none of it. She insisted that the street was an extension of the neighborhood, and therefore, she had jurisdiction over it. I tried to reason with her, explaining that she couldn't enforce HOA rules on non-members, but she was adamant. She informed me that a tow truck was on its way and I'd have to pick up my car and handle it with them. I panicked. I rushed back into my house, grabbing any document I could find to prove that I was indeed the rightful owner of the vehicle. As I raced back outside, I waved the paperwork frantically in front of Karen's face, hoping I could just prove her wrong and that she would finally get it. Hey, hey, look, I own this car, and I'm not part of your HOA. You have no right to tow it, I said, trying to keep my frustration in check. To her credit, Karen momentarily was taken aback. However, she quickly recovered, insisting that the appearance of my car was reason enough for her to take matters into her own hands. Desperate, I dialed a non-emergency police line to seek guidance on this perplexing situation. As I explained the absurdity of what was happening, the dispatcher assured me that they would send an officer to mediate. While the officer was on his way, the tow truck arrived and began hooking my car up. I tried to explain what was going on, but he still did his job, a job that he shouldn't even be doing. In what felt like an eternity, the officer did finally arrive, bringing a confused expression on his face. After hearing both sides of the story, he quickly confirmed what I had been saying all along that Karen had no authority to tow my car and she was overstepping her boundaries. The officer turned to Karen, reminding her that she couldn't enforce HOA rules on non-members and certainly not on public property. He instructed the tow truck driver to stand down, much to my relief. However, the story doesn't end there. The next day, I received a call from the HOA president who had been made aware of Karen's overzealous actions. He apologized profusely for her behavior and assured me that this would be addressed promptly. A few days later, I learned that Karen had been fined by the HOA for her misguided attempt to enforce rules on a non-member. Well, this was ironic. The very person who claimed to uphold order was now facing consequences for her own lack of judgment. Let's just say that HOA Karen never tried to mess with me again. I mean, it's just straight up. If you're not in the HOA, you cannot have it applied to you, and someone will use that against you if they think that you won't stand up for yourself, but when you do, you really put them in their place. What would have you done? Condo Takeover HOA Lawsuit I just bought a condo unit last year, and throughout this year, we found out now, not previously disclosed, about a ton of structural and material repairs that are needed to fix up the building. The total amount is ridiculous and has no real basis or plan. In any case, they violated our 22.1 statements by saying there is no special assessment planned for this year or the next two years as of 2022. There are reports that are now surfacing that show inspection reports by architects hired which detailed out a 2 million plus cost, and our reserves were 500k. These reports were not disclosed during the buying process, even though they clearly knew and discussed this since 2021. We're also now finding out that the law firm that the board and association has on the board is using a lawyer who does condo takeovers to basically force a massive $4 million association down our throats 
which would more than double our current HOA. We've just taken a vote to try and overturn the assessment, but they pulled out some BS sketchy answers with no math and said that it didn't pass. There was absolutely zero transparency into how this was tallied up, and not to mention, they didn't even allow virtual attendees to vote. You had to be there in person, so good luck if you're an investor. Anyone have experience with this and what the best option might be to take action against the association or the board? I've heard litigation might not be the smartest idea because of the time and money it would take, but I'm not sure what options I have that would be effective. Most of the roads I've gone down have been a dead end, and it seems like most law firms defend the HOA, but not many represent owners for litigation, so it's been really tough to even find a lawyer who is willing to litigate this. An answer, you're going to have to go the lawsuit route, find a lawyer, but it will be challenging. What state are you in? What it feels like is that the developer is making a play for the whole building and is conspiring with the board to make it happen by keeping maintenance low and then laying a big assessment to cover necessary repairs. If they were just keeping the fees low and not doing maintenance, you might have a good case. You could sue the board personally and the HOA for going this route. I see you're making a case for overturning the assessment. Not something you could do in Florida, for that would be a board responsibility, not HOA. How is the vote organized? Officially via the bylaws or grassroots effort? If you follow the process, you have a case, especially if you ask for the records of the election, you're entitled to them, to count the vote yourself. If you have a case for lack of disclosing known information, like a big assessment already voted in, you might be able to sue the previous owner, which is the seller, but not the HOA. Sounds like this is your biggest issue because of the lack of the 22.1 information. If the seller knew and didn't disclose, you have a case. If the seller didn't know, hard to have a case, but probably not an issue to the HOA. If they're putting large assessments in, there's a case that they're doing the right thing by addressing the needs of the HOA. See Surfside. What would you do? Would you lawyer up in this case? Let me know. As we get into the next story, I have to tell you something. Hey, also, I added more stories to the new 24-7 HOA care and radio stream on the channel. Perfect to binge or play for background noise while you sleep. Check out the link in the description or on the front page of the channel. It looks like this. HOA manager and neighbors are using the HOA to harass me. I posted a couple of months ago about my stalker neighbors filing an HOA complaint against me saying that my exterior lights are floodlights, even though they're normal exterior lantern style 100 watt light bulb lights. My neighbors have been harassing me for the last five years. The cops went to their house a month ago and told them to leave me alone. And if they set foot on my property again, it'll be considered trespassing. The male neighbor had previously shown up drunk on my doorstep in the middle of the night and wouldn't leave. He also kissed me without my consent a few years ago. He has also made comments to me in the past that he didn't need me to be home for him to go into my backyard because he knew my keypad code to the garage door. Anyway, I got a lawyer, and my lawyer sent a letter along with video evidence showing that my lights do not cast any light onto their property measured with a luxometer. Also sent multiple photos of others' homes in the HOA with similar exterior lights to mine. HOA manager Flat ignored my lawyer until two days before the hearing when my lawyer emailed again to say that if the hearing was still going to move forward, we want an open hearing so that members of the HOA can be present and that we can record it. HOA manager emailed back immediately that there were no meetings for the rest of the year and to check back after January 1st. Now, two weeks later, the same jerk face HOA manager sends me a new notice of violation, this time saying that my ring camera is in violation because I didn't get permission for it. The CCNRs do not say anything about security cameras. He even says that he will not permit it where it's currently installed, above my garage. Drove around the neighborhood today and there's 20 other homes with security cameras above their garage or near their garage. This manager keeps writing fake times and dates for the violation and falsely claims he is the one observing the violation, when it's actually my stalker neighbors. This HOA manager is not applying the rules fairly to everyone in my neighborhood. He's singling me out. What can I do? Terrible HOA Karen story time. So yeah, it's been storming since late last night and the pouring rain has been on and off since. This morning I left to work and the rain let up enough to where I didn't need my umbrella, which I usually leave in my car since it almost always rains when I get out of work. I live in a gated community where residential parking is scarce to say the least. Oftentimes, I, like many other tenants, can only find residential parking spots far from home. 
Any residents who were caught parked in a guest space were given a lovely notice with something along the lines of, park here again and we'll freaking tow you at your expense. Mind you, this is in a neighborhood where guest parking spots outnumber resident parking spots. HOAs, am I right? So on days when I come home after a closing shift between 10 and 11 p.m., I am doomed to park so far from my townhouse that it takes me a good 10 minutes to walk home, in the dark, alone, sometimes in the rain. This will be relevant momentarily. After work today, I made a quick grocery run for ingredients for tonight's dinner. It's around 6 o'clock at this point, and then it starts coming down in buckets shortly on the short drive home. I parked briefly in front of the house to drop the four bags off inside so I don't have to fight with my umbrella and the integrity of the groceries. Once that was done, I began my main quest for parking. Luck was sadly not on my side, but I figured I'd look for a vacant spot tomorrow morning when it wasn't a downpour. Now I have one of those inverted umbrellas with a starry galaxy pattern that makes getting in and out of the car during the rain just so very nice, let me tell ya. They run around $19, but it's worth it. So I make my way home on foot, clinging to my umbrella as the straight down rain became the dreaded diagonal pour. I heard someone say, hey, and I looked to see a large woman, probably in her 60s I think, in a tight pink tank and a tighter red shorts that I almost mistook for denim panties smoking in her garage. I don't really know anyone in my neighborhood, so I wasn't sure what to think. Let's call her Entitled Lady Karen. Karen says, can I have your umbrella? My overworked, underpaid, soak-shoed self just wanted to go home, make dinner, and do jack crap for the rest of the night. Who the heck asked to have someone's umbrella? Especially when the raindrops coming down are the size of grapes. I looked at her, hoping that I misheard what I clearly heard. I asked, pardon? Karen says, your umbrella's cute. Can I have it? I told her, uh, no. Why not? Come on, I need to check my mail. Logic.exe has stopped responding. FYI, the mailboxes were by the main gate, a three minute walk from my house, which was still several houses away. I said, because it's raining a lot and I'd rather not get soaked. Karen said, ah, you'll live, a little rain won't hurt you. Says the woman standing in her dry garage, safe. To which I reply, then you'll be fine getting your mail. I tried so hard not to laugh at her version of the surprise Pikachu face that everyone keeps memeing about, and so happy I finally got to see it in action. She scoffed and threw excuses like her hair, her makeup, whatever getting ruined. This coming from a woman who looks like she just got out of bed with no makeup, while I, a woman wearing modest makeup and have my raincoat hood protecting my humidity curled hair, am astonished to meet a wild Karen outside of my place of work. What a time to be alive. When she was done squawking or talking, I don't know, her voice was audible sandpaper, I decided that I was no longer amused and I went home. After a few seconds, I looked back and she was standing on the sidewalk with her now soaked cigarette. I was disappointed that she didn't start melting, yelling, oh, what a world. My vindictive butt shouted back at her, guess you can get your mail now. Don't worry, she didn't see where I lived, and I went on to have a nice big bowl of homemade soup for dinner. How would have you stood up to this HOA Karen, and what about those horrible parking spots? What would have you done? This psycho Karen thinks she owns the HOA. Let's see what OP thinks about that. Back in 2013, I, now 35 female, lived with my parents in part to help my mom take care of my dad as his health was deteriorating. Ultimately, it turned out to be cancer, caused by exposure to a chemical during his military service in the U.S. Marine Corps back in the late 1960s and early 1970s that turned out to be terminal. Due to the fact that mom and I were so focused on dad's care in the time that we weren't working and dad's own inability to take care of some things, some of the more cosmetic parts of home maintenance fell by the wayside. Minor things like fixing the walkway from the driveway to the front door, not a sidewalk by the street, mind you, and chipped paint on the front of the house suddenly weren't as important as trying to coax dad into taking his medications, trying to get him to eat something in the hopes that it would be kept down, or making sure that he made it to his appointments on time. 
A month or two after Dad passed away, while Mom and I were still grieving, a wild Karen appears at our doorstep, claiming to be the president of the HOA that did not exist in our neighborhood. Dad checked for that before he ever made the offer on the house. Mom was out at the time, and so I was the one who answered the door. Karen says, Hello, I'm Karen, and I live down the street. I'm secretary of the Neighborhood Homeowners Association. We demand to know why your house has reached the terrible state that it's in. Uh, no, no you aren't. I know for a fact that your homeowners association doesn't exist. My late father checked into that when he bought the house, and a lawyer looked into it just after he passed. So stop lying. Well, I am still entitled to know why your house is in this state. Not my house. It was my father's house, now it's in my mother's name, and that of my older brother. And you aren't entitled to anything. But if your sanctimonious butt wants to know and harass the grieving widow of a veteran and her spinster daughter, fine. You're about my parents' age, so my father lost his life to a battle with cancer, caused by his service in a war so people like you could spit on him upon his return. Instead of claiming to be from a homeowner's association that doesn't exist, be honest and say that you're demanding an explanation that you have no right to. We're not in city limits either, so you can't try to whine about the city ordinances. Well, it's still lowering the property values. Then why are you demanding an explanation for yourself rather than offering to help? I know most of the neighborhood knows. They brought food. I don't have time for this. You're trespassing and you have 10 seconds to start leaving the property before I call the county sheriffs. And if you come back, they will be called unless you are escorted by a Girl Scout with a cookie order form. Get bent. Do you think OP had some guts to stand up for their family in this hard time? Let me know what you think. How would you handle terrible HOA neighbors? Ever since I've moved in, I've been going back and forth with my neighbor, a single mom with two adult grown children where they have all tried to either park in my parking spot or block my driveway. And I tried texting her to fix the issue many times. Finally, I had it reported to the HOA president and they sent an email to all of us in the community with reminders on many things, including only to park in your own parking spot or designated areas. Me and my neighbor are the only people with parking spots. Everyone else just has their garage and driveway and their guests park on the street. So she knows I complained about her and that message was directly to her. Since that email went out, I had one incident with the mother of my neighbor visiting and I went out to tell her not to park in my spot as I had guests coming. She was only parking there until her daughter pulls out of her driveway and she'll move her car into her daughter's driveway. Other than that, they haven't blocked me since, which I'm really glad about. The HOA president said that he will reiterate this at our next HOA meeting. The HOA meeting is next week. I feel like I should say something with the audience of all my neighbors, but I'm not sure what. Right now, the two grown adult children are avoiding me like the plague. I don't care that I made the right decision as I gave them so many chances to just park on the street, which has plenty of street parking. They don't want to have to walk the one minute it takes to park on the street and walk into their home. Would you say anything at the HOA meeting? Do you agree with this? If they block your driveway, tow them. They'll learn real fast not to do it. If the reminder from the HOA solved the problem, let it go. Bringing it up at the meeting will just make you sound like you're complaining for no reason. If you say anything, I would just thank the board for solving your recent issue. And if you and your neighbor are the only ones with parking spots, nobody's going to care about your parking issue with your neighbor, and they'll likely think you're a butt for wasting everyone's time with an issue that only affects you and seems to be largely resolved. You're right, it's fixed, I'll let it go. I agree that just thanking the board will go a long way. Do you think that the issue's fixed or what would you do? HOA story time. Entitled neighbor wants workers to unseal the road so he could get out. This is about my entitled neighbor, one of many stories. Let's call him Dan. No one in the community likes Dan. Dan unfortunately lives right across from me. A month ago, we get a message from the HOA that they will be doing an asphalt seal coat on the roads in our community. They split it into three sections, one day for each section. They said it will take about 11 and a half hours, so from 7.30 in the morning to 7 at night, so we needed to plan accordingly for the day that the work will be done. For people who need to use their cars during the road work, they needed to move their cars to a nearby street, which is less than a one minute walk. 
They sent several emails, mailed everyone a letter, and posted notices on everyone's door, garage door, and the common areas. Pretty impossible to notice, unless you're Dan. At about 7.45 a.m., the workers start taping off areas to get ready. 8 a.m., the tar -like goo starts going down. These guys work fast. One machine lays down the thick liquid, and the three guys come in and spread it evenly. It's quite ASMR friendly, as it's like watching someone color. Anyways, it takes the workers about one hour to get to my part of the road. At about 9 a.m., I hear yelling outside. I look out the window, and Dan is yelling at the workers from his garage. Dan is trying to get out, and he's ticked that he can't now, unless he wants that tar-like goo to get on his precious truck. He starts ordering the workers to scrape off the coat so that he can leave. I have no clue if that's possible, but they'd already passed Dan's house, plus about 20 yards past his house. The foreman comes over to talk to Dan. The foreman tells Dan he's not going anywhere and that he was notified several times. In fact, the foreman points to the notice taped next to his garage door that Dan is standing six feet from. A notice that's been there four to five days. Dan makes excuse after excuse. He says that the HOA should have knocked on his door to let him know. More shouting occurs and Dan starts threatening to sue. The foreman doesn't care. He's doing his job. He warns Dan that if he drives on the coat, he'll be responsible for his own damages and more. Dan throws another tantrum and eventually retreats back to his home. As far as I can tell, Dan is the poster child for Mel Karens. What would you do if you lived next to a neighbor like this? Let me know. Dealing with nightmare new neighbors, writing them a note before escalating. My girlfriend and I live on the top floor of an apartment complex. We're both introverted homebodies. Generally, it's quiet. However, we had new neighbors move into the unit next to us last week who have brought nothing but pain. It seems to be a family of three, a man, woman, and child who have lots of friends. Every single day, the mariachi and reggaeton starts in the morning and continues to midnight, increasing in obnoxiousness as they drink more. That incessant baseline just shakes the walls and comes in at 70 db measured in our unit via an iphone app the kid screams all day and night seemingly without any kind of intervention on new year's eve we saw someone carrying 10 plus folding chairs into their unit and these people had a party that started at about 7 p.m and carried on until 6 30 a.m the next morning not exaggerating up until about 1 a.m., I wanted to give them a pass. I mean, it is a holiday after all. However, as the night went on, the music continued and they had kids screaming at the top of their lungs, running up and down the shared hallway, again with seemingly no adult intervention. As the kids clearly got more and more drunk, they started spilling out into the hallway too. The carpet is now stained with what I'm guessing is beer and garbage water and has food ground into it. Yesterday, the music started again around noon and went on until sometime past midnight. It is inescapable throughout the entirety of our unit and we have to hear this garbage for hours even after we go to bed in our room on the complete opposite side of the apartment with the door closed. I cannot stand the way that these people behave. I have lived in apartments for about 20 years and these people are by far the worst that I have ever had the misfortune of living next to. I could just never imagine being so blatantly inconsiderate and disrespectful. I'm asking for a sanity check from you. Is the note that I've drafted below appropriate? I've been told more than once that I can be too blunt. <laughs> if it doesn't give me the results, which I don't believe it will, this is mostly just to say I tried, what should I do? Tell the landlord, file the police noise complaint? I just don't even have high hopes that either of them will do anything about it. And the letter is, Hello, we aren't sure if you're aware and we are not trying to be rude, but the noise coming from your unit at all hours of the day and night is very disruptive to your neighbors. 
In addition to the screaming and the loud conversations, the bass, which carries easily, shakes the walls and we are able to hear it clearly throughout the entirety of our unit, including in our bed when we are trying to sleep during quiet hours. As your lease states, there are designated quiet hours between this and that time in night and morning, which we should not be able to hear you during those. Currently, our right to quiet enjoyment is being infringed, and we ask politely that you remedy this issue by turning your music down. We don't expect people to sneak around their own units, and we are understanding that you have a child and kids make noise. However, having parties like you did on New Year's Eve with loud music until 6.30 a.m., children screaming and running through the hallway, seemingly without adult intervention, is completely inconsiderate and rude. Please be considerate and remember that other people occupy the units around you. Signed, your neighbors. I've also been recording the noise with timestamps as well as taking screenshots of the decibel meter. Imagine what the people below them are going through. I can't even imagine. And OP says, I know, I truly feel bad for them. If their downstairs neighbors have the demeanor a lot of people here do, they just won't say anything or want to be involved. Unfortunately, I think this one is up to me. Yeah, I mean, they're breaking rules left and right. I'd be talking to my landlord yesterday because you have the proof of it, which they won't like if you record it, but still, the fact of the matter is, they're breaking the rules, they're disturbing everyone around them for literally almost 24 hours. OP, take them on down, but be careful when you do it because they sound wild. HOA Horror Story Time. During COVID, I moved into a small, maybe 30 home, lakefront subdivision in Texas with a fairly inactive HOA, primarily run by retired homeowners. Of course, 18 months in, a large tree fell on my home and caused significant roof damage. Being a novice homeowner, I wasn't aware that cement tile roofs are quite expensive to replace and to obtain 100% replacement cost, and I've been battling with the insurance company for 16 months and one over-promising roofer through appeals and now finally, the last piece, an appraisal. I am in a bad position because there is a $100,000 difference between the contractor and the insurance, but that's another story for another day. Now the HOA has sent me two letters, the first with three issues, first a political sign and then roof repairs not being made by six months after the tree fall and also our septic connected sprinkler smelling. They threatened to report me to the TECQ. Rather than argue with them over the legality of the sign, by the way, the no sign policy has an unwritten exception for church signs. I removed it. I fired our septic maintenance person, who was the same one the HOA president next door uses, and hired a new one and had the tank pumped. I have zero experience with septic and the connected sprinklers. Also, I've noticed other neighbor's sprinklers stinking from time to time. Fast forward several months later, and unfortunately, the insurance issue is still slow going. Last week, I received a letter that they would start fining me 50 bucks a month for both lots that I own, even the one the house is not on, beginning in March 2024. That is fine with me. I suspect the repairs will be done by then. But then my dad came across the HOA president in my yard yesterday with another individual, and they said unspecified neighbors complained about a mold smell and they were testing. Dad was nice to them said let us know and left it at that but i'm livid so first off i do have allergies but i smell nothing do they have a right to just come into my yard i suspect the complaint is the hoa tiring of looking at my tarps which are quite ugly at the end of the day i have an open insurance claim and i don't have a spare one hundred thousand dollars 200k total to replace this ridiculous cement tile roof I admit that I've made mistakes along the way with the insurance selection, the roofer selection, and maybe buying this home in the first place. I have loved lakeside living. I'm two doors down from my sister, which has been lovely. When asked if this was the first time in the HOA, the reply, I lived in one for a few years as a renter, but it was a fairly new townhome and I didn't have to do anything. The HOA did the outside landscaping for the teeny tiny bit of green space in the front. First time as a homeowner and not a fan. I mean, imagine how you'd feel if you like came home from work or something one day and you go in your yard and the president and some dude is standing there. I'd be ticked off like this is my yard. I want to come home and expect that you're not going to be standing in it measuring for stuff without asking me first. Wow, <laughs> this is really bad. 
what would have you done? As we get into the next story, I have to tell you something. Hey, also, I added more stories to the new 24-7 HOA Care and Radio stream on the channel, perfect to binge or play for background noise while you sleep. Check out the link in the description or on the front page of the channel. It looks like this. This is a story of the worst HOA neighbor ever. What would you do? I live in Washington, USA, and I moved into my condo about two and a half years ago. After a few months of moving in, the person who lives below me came up to my apartment and started blasting at my parents who opened the door and were visiting and don't even speak English. He was shouting about a noise issue. I talked to him nicely about it. Now, I didn't know about it, but the chairs in my dining area, when moved, used to cause a noise for the level below. This was when I was new, so I didn't know about it until he told me, or rather shouted at me. I made sure that the chair noise never happened again, because, of course, if it's under my control, and if I'm doing something, I want to be helpful and not cause trouble. But the interaction was not pleasant, and I didn't say anything considering there was an issue on my side and I was understanding about it. He could have been nice and explained what was happening, but he chose not to, and this was the first ever interaction with this old gentleman who lives below me. Cut to eight months later, around 10 p.m., I was working with my headphones on while he kept bashing on my front door. I was working and I was deep into a coding issue at that point and I was just trying to debug. It took me a few minutes to realize that someone's at my front door because I also had my noise canceling headphones on. I was scared at first, but opened the door and he just shouts at me saying, stop whatever you're doing, it's getting noisy. Well, I explained to him very nicely that I am working and not doing anything and he keeps on not believing and saying that I just need to stop being really unreasonable. Two minutes into this, we hear a noise. It's coming from, I don't know, maybe upstairs or from the apartment next door. Not sure, don't really care. But then he says, hear that, that's the noise, while I'm standing in front of him on my front door, because the noise is coming from somewhere else. And he says it's that, so right there, I was not doing anything. I live alone, I don't have pets, and my girlfriend lives in a different city right now for her job. At this point, I gave him my number and told him that next time it happens, feel free to shoot me a message and then we can figure out what's happening together. I tried to be helpful in the situation. Well, the other thing is that I travel so much that I'm not home 50% of the time, so my intention was either, hey, we can figure out where it's coming from, or, if I'm doing it, I'll see what I'm doing at that point when he hears the noise and will be more mindful of that specific thing and not cause any issue. So a few days after I gave him the number, he messaged me in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., to ask my pet to be controlled. I don't have a pet and no one else living in my apartment and no one else was visiting. I was already asleep for more than an hour when I got that message. This, again, was not a message asking if I'm doing something and if I can stop and be more mindful. This was again, straight up, putting the blame on me without even knowing the situation. So I tried being helpful, but that didn't seem to work. Cut to tonight. He comes while I just got back from a day trip and tells me that I need to stop dropping stuff and that I was also making noise last night. And when I tell him that I just got back and that I was out last night till 2 a.m., I was out yesterday from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. And he's not ready to believe. He's like, your girlfriend might be here, who was visiting and he saw her. And I have just said that it might be my girlfriend and I'll let her know if she was home. But we were both out together, which he is not ready to believe again. And then he says, well, there was also someone smoking. Now, what am I supposed to do about any smoke that he is getting from wherever the heck? I've been very respectful to him, considering that he is an elder person, but he has not been okay. In all these incidents, which were six to eight months apart, even if there was a noise from my side, the dude could have just been nice and told me that there's something that I'd be mindful of, but he's just not been nice about it. Now, the concerning part is that in one of these interactions, he mentioned that if I would like to hear from his lawyer and I don't want to get into any legal trouble, I own the house, but I'm still on a visa in the country and don't want to be caught up in this useless issue. I want to inform the HOA about it, but I also don't want them to say anything to him to agitate him. Do you agree about calling the police next time he knocks? What about not being a pushover, this says, and stop engaging with him? He's unhinged. Yeah, call the cops, get cameras, do something, because this guy clearly can't take no for an answer, and I'd be uncomfortable living beside him. I honestly would. I mean, if you've ever had a bad neighbor, you know what I'm talking about. The good ones, just, they're so good, do not take them for granted. What would have you done?
neighbor complained to the HOA about my yard. So I have a Karen for a neighbor. She's a grumpy old C with a live-in son in his 40s and no other family or friends. And when I say she's a Karen, we're talking to the point that she came into my property to yell at our landscaper about a boulder he was installing on our property. Something about believing it would fall over onto more of our property. A few months after we moved in, we receive a letter from the HOA saying that they'd received complaints and asking that we make sure that we're mowing, watering, and maintaining. I chalked it up into moving into a nicer neighborhood and made an effort to mow twice a week instead of my normal once, added a little time to the sprinklers, and well, figured it was all good. Apparently, it was not all good, as we received another letter stating that the complaints had continued and the HOA wanted to talk with us to see what the problem was. Now I should note, we had just moved in not that long ago and hadn't landscaped the back yet, so we were letting our dogs pee on the front at night, which led to the inevitable patches of bright green grass that grow stupid fast. Now I'll freely admit that I don't keep my yard to the level of some of my neighbors, but it was in perfectly good shape outside of some green spots in an otherwise average looking yard, and I do my best to keep things mowed and looking decent. Turns out our grumpy C had taken real offense to this and started complaining to the HOA. The hearing ended up being mostly incoherent rambling, but the bottom line was she didn't like how our lawn looked with the green spots. While the HOA agreed this was not her business and definitely not theirs, I decided that she was right and we should stop letting our dogs out in the front to pee as I also don't like the green spots. Now I put them on the leash and let them do their business in her yard read tree lawn and I'm clearly not the only one as her entire yard is now covered in pea spots and dead spots on her actual lawn which my dogs don't step on. I'm pretty sure she's complained about everyone with a dog and now the entire neighborhood takes their dogs to her yard. The best part she actually does a crappy job taking care of her lawn weeds and crabgrass everywhere and she just waters it almost non-stop. So today, I got to report her to the HOA for her yard looking like total crap. If it were any other house, and there are much worse, I wouldn't care at all. But this lady wanted lawns without spots, so I'm just doing my part to enforce her rules. And to everyone hating on HOAs, they're hit and miss for sure. But in this case, they didn't do anything but tell me that someone complained and then tell her that I wasn't violating any rules and that they weren't going to be involved. Also, HOAs are often surprisingly easy to take over. You just have to skip the whining about how terrible they are and do the work instead. If the HOA is that bad, talk to some neighbors, tell them you're going to run for the board, and get them to vote for you, and then help others to do the same. And remember what you hated about the previous board. Be forewarned, everyone finds a reason to complain, and no one's willing to help out. For everyone about the green grass from dog pee, urea to ammonium to nitrogen for plants, if you don't water it, it stays concentrated in one area, killing the grass. If you do water it, or just spray the spot with a hose quickly, it's diluted and gives the grass a big boost of organic nitrogen fertilizer. We've had ongoing issues with our HOA, and the latest is that they have sent us a warning about having an RV, a very nice expensive RV, parked on a short street across from our driveway. Some friends came through for a couple of days on their way from Alaska to Kentucky and took a break at our home. We received a warning from the HOA accusing our friends of camping in their RV. They stayed inside our home in the guest bedroom, but they made a point of saying that there was evidence of camping and that we were in trouble over it. The interesting thing to me is that there is construction next door to our home that's been going on for over two years, and the builder, who will eventually live in the home, parked junk trailers in operable vehicles and stored trailers belonging to subs while they weren't working on the property. They dumped trash on our property and at one point dumped a full-size deli and meat cooler on our property. The rules clearly state that residents aren't allowed to park trailers, boats, inoperable vehicles, and such on their lots. I did not know this before our friends arrived, so yes, I'm in the wrong, but I'm pretty ticked off that they've allowed this contractor to make our really nice neighborhood of expensive houses look like crap for two years. 
Whenever I complained to the HOA, they told me they're not in the enforcement business and that it's different because he's a builder and the HOA rules don't apply, even though he will live in the home for two years to avoid capital gains. Their other recent attack, I'll call it that, is that one night we went out to grab a bite and the HOA's compliance officer called me and threatened to call the sheriff in animal control because our dogs were barking inside our home. We had accidentally left the windows open and that was an honest mistake because we always close them. We live in the mountains and there's wildlife. Around that time, a fox was coming onto our back patio attracted to our home because of food trash left out by subcontractors that would blow into our backyard. Our dogs bark. And once I realized that compliance officer was the same woman who'd ignored my complaints about construction trash, and then I asked her how she could threaten me while ignoring my complaints, she replied, we're not in the enforcement business. I guess she didn't see the irony. They are also harassing us for things that they are not enforcing with other residents like dogs barking constantly, loud karaoke, and parties until all hours of the night. I have been treated like crap by this HOA. When we bought our home two years ago, our home came with plans for a second floor, and I'm also afraid that since they think I'm a nuisance, that they won't approve our permit to build that was previously approved by them. Can they do that? What would you do if you lived in this terrible HOA? This is bad, man. If you're going to apply the rules to one, you got to apply them to everybody. What would you do? Ask to remove the camera and solar flame light on the structure of a home that's been there for two years. Curious of what you would do. Do I just remove what they asked and place it in another area inside the home without saying a word? Or do I remove it? place it inside the home, and then send them an email back saying what you asked to remove has been done. However, please note that whatever neighbor complained about this obviously thought it was there for the wrong intention and it was not. I am not using it to watch or spy on neighbors. It's there for security purposes because, and then tell them why, I guess the association feels my safety isn't a concern and so on. Generally speaking, I've had almost no issues with the association the last 15 years that I've been here. I cause no problems and mean no harm to anyone. Here's what went down. I got an email yesterday from my HOA that basically said I had to remove a security camera and a solar light on the outside of my home. It's a 1.2 watt solar flame light and not a floodlight. And I have a ton of decorations out for Halloween and I usually decorate for the holidays. These pieces they want removed have been there for two years now, no problems. My camera is pointed to a walking path that is right next to my porch, with a few other townhouses in the background in the distance. I've had some issues with strangers coming around in the evening, jumping on my patio after 10pm, knocking on my door and ringing the doorbell and running. Hence the camera, since I get concerned someone may take something or try to rob me. It is not a ring doorbell, but is a blink camera. It's not an eyesore. I wanted some security and some lighting there because it was dark. So I asked them to send me some rules and regulations so I can see them. And they sent me this gym from 2008, right when I moved into the townhouse. According to them, no floodlights or any other electrical or mechanical devices may be installed to or installed to any portion of the common and limited elements at any time, except as may be provided below. So I still don't know what the below is, as it's not in the document, but it is the reason for it because we are preserving the economic and aesthetic value of our community. Also, they threaten to charge me $25 per day if I don't remove them. They sent me a picture of the specific camera and the light in question. I have others there too, so I'm surprised they didn't take pictures of those. First off, I think the rule is BS. My safety is more important than the aesthetic of the outside of the home. Because I know this is a fight that I won't win, I'll be seeking alternative methods of security that are not against the rules and regulations. Secondly, what possesses an association to come around and check on these things? This couldn't be a random check, could it? Should I suspect a neighbor complained of something, maybe my over-the-top amazing decorations, so they came around to check it out and got me on something else instead? Actually, I'm almost more certain now that a certain neighbor complained because her and her daughter have been walking around my home for years now. 
Their home is not visible to me or my camera. They just walk the path. I caught them the past two days looking directly at my camera and they even said, is that a spy camera? When looking at it. Apparently, that's new to them despite being there for the last two years in plain sight. My neighbor saw the lady a couple of weeks ago creeping around my home and told her that she was from the association and she was just there to admire my Halloween decorations. She lied. Now I do have a partial physical disability, so safety is even more of a concern for me over aesthetics. More info. Move the camera inside. That's how my security cameras are installed. That way nobody knows they're there. I'm not in an HOA. That's just my choice. That's pretty much what I'll be doing. Oh, and instead of leaving dimmer flame lights out on the structure, I'll get highly bright solar lights staked to the ground for the walkway in front of my home. I'm not ruining anything with that one. When the HOA Karen messes with your safety and you have a disability, how would you handle it? HOA Karen put a lien on my house, but I'm not even in the HOA. Click the video on your screen so you find out what happens to that HOA, and I'll see you there.